All right, uh, appreciate y'all coming out today, spending some time with us. Uh, my name is Ed Bailey. I'm uh, with Dell, part of our extreme uh, scale infrastructure group, our hyper hyperscale group that uh, has traditionally been known as uh, DCS or Data Center Solutions. This is Ala Yusuf, uh, same team. We're part of the architecture team within that group. Uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about today, we're going to touch off a little bit on some of the trends we're seeing coming out of call it our hyperscale space. Some of the things uh, we're looking at as we um, uh, are seeing some other trends in the in the market, uh, and then really touch on uh, at, a, at a glancing blow on some of the infrastructure elements, and then all is going to walk us through the elements of systems management and, and resource management con composability that we're really focused on advancing our uh, some of our uh, innovation, some of our uh, technologies on. Uh, we have a demo down in the marketplace uh, where you can come see this live. So certainly want to encourage you to come see us down there and talk to us after this uh, so that you can get a little better understanding of what we're trying to do. And, and we absolutely want your, your feedback as we're, uh, we're working in this space uh, as well. So, you know, with, with some of the sh shifting trends, I mean, some of these are buzzwords you all are very familiar with. Uh, you know, where we're seeing pretty much everyone in, in our space and even in some of the emerging space here is, is in some, some form of cloud. You know, we're seeing some customers uh, starting to, um, uh, to do proof of concepts, try to understand how they're going to go transition workloads, transition their environments, uh, you know, the, the, the software-defined elements of things, software-defined pretty much everything at this point. Uh, you know, how do we, how do we enable that? Um, how do we facilitate that and make it easy? Uh, make it flexible, make it agile, make it y useful uh, in the open aspects of things. We are uh, you know, very engaged in the, the open management. You know, you'll hear words like Redfish. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Um, would love to show you uh, that demo in the marketplace as well. So we have that running on the product we'll touch on today. Um, and so, you know, the open aspects of things and really understanding from a customer's perspective, what are the elements of open that they really want to grasp and make a, a, a key tenant in their, uh, in their deployment, in their infrastructure, and, and what are the ones that, you know, that are out there that maybe don't add quite as much uh, value. Uh, one of the things we know for certain is that you know, customers that we're talking to are really shifting from this idea of buying monolithics. You know, I'm going to buy five more servers, five more of this, ten more of that. Uh, we're really talking about resources. We're talking about elements of compute, elements of storage. How do I get those into my environment uh, and get them deployed and provisioned as quickly as possible? Uh, in the space that we're kind of born out of, that we engage in more day to day, in that hyperscale space, uh, you know, that, that's the element of buy. I mean, that's, that's where we want to operate. We want to ship fully integrated, validated racks, ready to roll into place, hook up to management, hook up to power, let's get it deployed, let's get a provision, let's put it to work. Uh, and so that, that's our focus when we're, when we're looking at these, these types of elements. And, and what, we're, what we're doing that with in our space uh, for a while is, is a platform called the DSS 9000. And this is, you know, I was about to touch on really what we've enabled with this. Um, but just to, to set a little bit of, of, uh, of groundwork, you know, what we're focused on from a hardware perspective are infrastructures that give us, give us that flexibility and agility to go get the right SKUs, the right configs, the right resources for our changing workload, changing customer requirements, uh, but do it in a manner that we have consistency in the infrastructure, in the management, in the, in the elements that touch uh, our provisioning tools, our deployment tools, our data centers, so that we're not we're not turning the wheel every time we, we have a shift in demand or a shift in workload, a shift in use cases. Uh, you know, we're, again, we're focused on the restful pieces uh, uh, and secure pieces of management. Open management, where we are focused on not only looking at technologies to go implement in the future, but what matters today. How do we generate that flexibility and agile today? This is something that um, uh, will be coming later part of this year. We have, uh, we have a half rack of this. Uh, with a demo, uh, in, in, again, in the marketplace. So, so please come and see us. So with that, Al is going to kind of run us through uh, the, um, you know, the solution aspect of this, where we're talking in terms of systems and, and resource management. Thank you, Ed. I'm Al Yosef. I'm in the Extreme Scale Infrastructure Group at Dell. 
Uh, Ed touched upon the hardware, so what I want to touch upon uh, a full solution that is just b beyond uh, the hardware. There are a lot of pieces out there. Um, we have, uh, uh, the, when we started building this demo, that we had a goal is to deploy an OpenStack workload on our infrastructure in an easy and simple fashion. We started with the DSS 9000 as our choice of hardware, and for a reason that I will be touching upon a little bit later. Um, but also there is this work around the Intel rock scale architecture. Uh, the, the rock scale architecture is around managing a pool of resources, whether that's storage, compute, or networking. And in a magical fashion, bringing those uh, pool of resources and creating a workload out of that. And there is the release of Pod Manager, which is an integral part of uh, the rock scale architecture. We'll be also touching upon that a little bit later. I mentioned the, the DSS 9000 and when, why we use the DSS 9000. One critical piece in the DSS 9000 is this rack manager, this entity, this controller that is in the rack that knows everything about the rack. It uh, knows about the resources of the rack, all the chassis and the servers and all that. And pod manager can, and, and, and it can do that, but it also can do it in a, uh, through this Redfish API, a very easy, simple to use HTTP-like API. So that's, uh, that, that's the new uh, Redfish uh, standard that, that has been defined by the DMTF standard body. Um, now to bring all of this together, right? I mean, we wanna use this infrastructure, infrastructure. we wanna uh, interact with it. We partnered with AMI to build the front-end tools and the CLI to be able to extend uh, dashboards like Horizon. Um, so with that, I'll go to the next slide. I mentioned Pod Manager, right? So P Pod Manager is the you know is the main piece of the rack scale architecture. It is this uh, um, the best way to think about it is the set of Linux services that you can install uh, on a physical machine or a, vir a virtual machine. But uh, what it does, it obviously as I mentioned, it manages this pool of resources, but it, it exposes this front-end API for the outside world to, com uh, to consume and uh, request things from Pod Manager. And at the back end, it talks to this pool of resources, network, uh, storage, compute. And uh, for example, in the case of our Rack Manager, it talks to the Rack Manager to get those resources through the Redfish API. So that, uh, at a high level, what uh, uh, Pod Manager is. A hey, question, question. Yeah. So we've talked about Redfish, right? What, what's the big deal about Redfish? So the, if I can summarize it in a few things, um, obviously it's a modern API. It's the new API to manage data center hardware. It is simple to use. It is HTTP uh, sending like a curl commands and, and things like that, uh, secure. And it, 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 can be a, it can apply to a single node, it can scale to thousands of nodes. So it is fitting for a single node and can scale in a data center that is like thousands of nodes. One last thing on Pod Manager, as I was talking about Pod Manager, you see these PSMEs. So every pool of resource needs to implement this PSME that conforms to the Pod Manager API, mm -hmm. the Pod Manager uh, architecture. And so this way the Pod Manager can be can talk to it. And so it is Redfish to our uh, rack level manager. So what I want to touch upon is, so the, the, there were these uh, building blocks. How did we use them? What was the benefit of it? What, you know, what did we get out of them? One thing that was obvious was the discovery piece, right? I can out of band discover everything in my system, all my servers, the chassis, everything that is in it. Um, didn't have to have the system in a certain state. Mm -hmm. uh, they just, systems were added to my rack and I can discover them and know exactly what I have in the rack. So that was huge, right? And beyond discovery, uh, it, it can, I can do more, right? I can uh, do this whole inventory of the rack, right? I can get information about each node uh, uh, I can get like the CPUs, memory, and hard drive. Uh, uh, that is huge, right? I mean, out of band, I don't need to boot to an OS. I don't need to uh, p pixie boot, uh, uh, you know, one of the challenges. Uh, you know, sometimes 
you know, when we're discovering system, we have to, we rely on booting into, uh, uh, into an OS to discover the system, right? A bootstrap image or whatever that is. For whatever reason, sometimes it doesn't boot, right? It doesn't, uh, you know, uh, it's not set up to Pixie or the boot settings is not set correctly or whatever. But, uh, you know, being able to uh, discover that and, and control that part is, is, is huge. As I mentioned, the inventory is, uh, uh, is huge as well, you know, to, to be able to get this, uh, you know, CPU memory and hard drive and have that, in, you know, aggregated and, and be able to do with it. And that's where the rock scale architecture comes in, right? This, mm -hmm. this ability to compose a node, to build a server out of those pool of resources, that, that aggregate CPU, memory, and hard drive, and just put it together and create a workload, a server. So I have my server, right? I have my server now I can, uh, I need to configure it, right? Um, I mean, that's a big thing, you know, to be able to set bias settings out of band, right? Um, to be able to, uh, you know, configure the RAID or uh, uh, just, uh, you know, power control the uh, nodes, that, that, that is huge. So that's one of the, uh, you know, that, that's the rack manager with the ability to just uh, uh, control everything out of band. And finally, that I'm done, um, I can deploy it, I, I can send it. You know, I can provision my nodes, and you know, through the single uh, management interface, I can just tell my nodes to boot to the uh, provisioning server, whether that's being fuel or uh, ironic or whatever that is. Where, where else do we see configuration go? Uh, Ed, I think uh, configuration. One other thing that can be interesting here: what if there is a way to do a bias update, do firmware update, just through this single, single IP, this rack manager that mm -hmm. we have in there. I, I think that's huge. Um, another piece, you know, what if we can tell the nodes, uh, you know, point the nodes to some ISO image and, and, and tell it to boot to that ISO image and uh, to yeah. run some diagnostics. So, so there are things that uh, uh, we can add to this. But uh, you know, today, just setting bias setting, configuring RAID, and, and power controlling the node is huge. Um, and it was, uh, uh, I was in a, one of the earlier key, uh, keynotes, and there's going to be like 400 million servers in the next few years. <laughs> and managing that is, is, is obviously is a, is a huge challenge. So uh, anything that can help that ecosystem is great. Uh, what I'm showing you here is just a snapshot of uh, an extension to the uh, uh, to Horizon dashboard um, work that uh, we partnered with AMI to do uh, this plugin, uh, this mega rack uh, plugin to Horizon. Basically, what's showing you—I don't know if you guys can see it in the back—but um, the, the top uh, table is showing you nodes that have been composed, that's been built, and, and, and are part of my OpenStack cluster. And at the bottom, you're seeing the, the, the list of resources, the, this pool of resources that are available to me that I can build. I can pick from, call it bag of goodies or something. So that is uh, uh, another example of a, an OpenStack integration project, uh, a Fuel. By the way, I love Fuel. Right? I, I use Fuel, and I love it. It's a simple to use tool. Um, you know, a rock, scale, a rock scale architecture can play a role here where it can discover the system. I understand fuel has its own discovery process. But again, if we can discover the system reliably and send it to fuel, uh, basically have the system that's showing up in the rock scale architecture tab, everything that is discovered when I'm ready to add it to my uh, OpenStack uh, cluster, pixie boot it to uh, fuel and have uh, fuel take over from that point on. I talked about composability, right? Uh, you know, uh, th that's the uh, big part of the Intel rack scale architecture, right? You know, the ability to compose a node to build a server for my workload. You know, composing a node can be like as simple as a, as, as a one CLI command that I can, you know, send and say, give me a node of, you know, default everything, right? Just give me a node out of the pool of resources or can be advanced, can be, you know, based on my, you know, requirement, my workload requirement, it can be, um, you know, I can say I need it with this many cores, this many, this many hard drives, and such and such. Um, there is a mega rack composer from AMI that does this advanced filtering that, um, 
and uh, we'll be happy to show it to you uh, in our cube, in our booth uh, for the demo. So when it's all said and done, I went through a few steps, I configured and, and sent it to my provisioning tool, and boom, I have my, uh, uh, my uh, node added to OpenStack. So that was huge to me, right? Uh, just uh, you know, using these simple tools out there to be able uh, to, be able to quickly deploy, uh, whether it's, you know, was a Nova compute node or a, a Cinder backend. Um, so that's, uh, that's what the live demo is about. How does the, you know, the, the DSS 9000 or just the elements of systems management hardware, how does, it, how does it aid what you've been trying to do here? So uh, the big thing in the DSS 9000, um, you know, as I was mentioning, you know, building this workload that is fitting to OpenStack. And mm -hmm. the DSS 9000 has this mix of compute and storage and with a, a uniform way of management, a single point of management, a single IP, being able to pick from that workload was huge, right? Just having uh, uh, a configuration SKUs that are fitting for my OpenStack and just me sending a few commands and picking from that and extending my OpenStack cluster. So, Ed, you've been asking me all the questions, right? Uh, <laughs> let me ask you a question. So obviously I love the uh, you know, rack management part of it, and I, that's, that's, uh, uh, that is huge. But the DSS 9000 has more than just uh, rack level ma management, uh, if you could elaborate on that a bit. Well, so you know, what we're talking about, again, is logical resources, right? So you know, when, we, when we're talking to, to customers in a lot of our environments, frankly, we have customers that have never even seen the hardware, right? We're talking logical resources. Uh, compute, storage, other elements. And so, again, when we talk in terms of the things we're focused on, certainly from an open perspective are the elements that the customer engages with. And it starts with, with the management and the pieces that I'll have talked about. But we need to be able to have the tangible goods, you know, have the elements that we can operationalize from a deployment perspective, um, and give the flexibility, again, based on the shifting workloads or the shifting needs. And so, you know, what you're seeing here is kind of a high-level overview uh, of, of an infrastructure that gives us uh, flexibility with regard to the, uh, the sled elements, if you will, the, the, the physical elements of this thing, uh, but a, a common experience, if you will, with regard to the power and the management pieces. And so again, you know, this is something that uh, we've had in certain spaces for a little while now, and we're looking to bring this to the broader market with a lot of the elements that I always touched on. Another question, Ed. Uh, uh, I think in, in one of your earlier uh, slides, you mentioned that uh, this trend that you see from one U, two U's, that is to uh, rock scale uh, design, is that a trend that you see continuing? Yeah, I mean, we think so, right? I mean, when we're talking in terms of how do we buy resources, how do we get those deployed, we need to make that easier. We need to make it faster. We need to be able to capitalize on you know, the, the, the dollars that we're putting in the infrastructure as quickly as possible. And so uh, we absolutely see that continuing uh, and, and, uh, and expect it to, to continue to, to, to grow pretty aggressively. So, you know, where do we see this going, right? I mean, it's just, it's just going to uh, continue from a capability perspective when we talk in terms of, you know, more integration into OpenStack environments more capability from a, a resource management perspective in how we go discover these things. You know, you know, Intel has done a great job pushing us with rack scale architecture. There is a longer term vision for all this. Uh, the, the ability to take advantage of a lot of those elements today, frankly, from an asset management composability perspective, they're real, right? And they're out there. Uh, and so we're continuing to build on that. You know, the, the ability to use this for bare metal provisioning. You know, our focus on this is to be able to do this out of band. We want to be able to enable this with as few touches, if you will, as possible in the provisioning process. So the out of band element, the ability to leverage, you know, Redfish, the open systems management, uh, and, you know, and have the, have the hardware uh, facilitate that is, is absolutely critical to, to our vision here. You know, and again, you know, kind of, kind of redundant, but, but the ability to go uh, take advantage of that in future technologies. As we look at disaggregation of other elements of the hardware, you know, we're, we're trying to put the foundation in place to be able to take advantage of that uh, as quickly as possible. 
So, you know, kind of in summary, you know, why, why is this a focus? You know, we, we, um, uh, we, we were at the, uh, at the expo last night for the, for the little happy hour. And, and, you know, frankly, I think we surprised a few people with regard to what we were showing here and, and what we're trying to do. I mean, this, is, this is a priority for us, you know, the, to, to continue to uh, enable, call it solutions, be it hardware systems, resource management in open stack environments is absolutely a priority. You know, our commitment with Intel on rack scale architecture and continuing to evolve that. 1.2 uh, is, uh, is something that we're working through now. Uh, we're excited about more announcements throughout the course of, uh, of this year and something that we're really excited about. Uh, you know, really this is just the beginning uh, in, in that front. And then, you know, with all this uh, is, is the is the broader Dell from a deployment services standpoint the the you know, the ability to go do systems and solutions like this but leverage the broader being if you will is something that we're excited about too it gives us a significant capability when we're talking in terms of having multiple data centers gear on the edge uh, being able to push things closer to uh, you know uh, you know re regional users is 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 a focus for us as well. And so with that, uh, you know, we can do a little Q&A here. Uh, certainly, uh, we, we really would like to invite you uh, down to come see us at the Expo. I mean, that's where Ala can walk yeah. you through the demo live. Like, as I mentioned before, we have Redfish uh, live there, and we have the hardware elements live there as well. I just want to say that Meratek Ganguly from Intel, she's one of the architects for the uh, rack scale architecture, will be at our booth uh, to answer any questions around rack scale architecture. 2 to 3 p.m. today? 2 to 3 p.m. today. She'll be there. All right. We re really appreciate your time. Thank really you. appreciate y'all showing up to see us today. Thank you all.